Welcome to a special edition of Anglican Down Under. This is episode 402. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm David Old, and it is the morning of Tuesday, the 5th of June 2018, here in not so sunny Parramatta. From the future. Okay, once again, we have our favorite correspondent from Down Under. And I don't know if you guys do or don't do, but you need to do by going to davidold.net and, you know, catching up on all the news that happens Down Under. Now, in Christian news, uh, people get onto stories by somebody emailing something, usually a picture, a story, a bulletin. Did you hear this? Um, And a lot of stories I post throughout the, the years come from a source. Sometimes the source yeah. says, yep, you can name me. Sometimes the source says, you can kind of name me, but you can't quote me. Uh, and sometimes we'll have an off the record conversation for hours and yes. hours. And sometimes I get news that I just can't post because it's uh, it's hearsay or it's going to uh, really hurt somebody or hurt an organization. Um, and David, you find yourself in these situations more frequently than me sometimes. Yeah, so uh, absolutely. So often, I, I think it's probably the case with you as it is for me. The the, the filing cabinet at davidolds.net is quite large and expansive and has a large amount of information in it, uh, only a small proportion of which is is, is published mm-hmm. uh, for the many reasons that you say. Sometimes, honestly, if we can't verify something, uh, we won't we won't publish it. Uh, sometimes it's just not the right thing to do. Uh, sometimes, you know, you owe people a favor. Sometimes the good guys just say to you, look, I don't think this is going to help. Uh, at, at this point, uh, and so that's what's been going on very recently. Uh, the vexed issue of marriage uh, continues to to trouble the Anglican Church of Australia, and we've been doing, having a whole bunch of stuff go on here recently. Our bishops met in March, and they met in their annual meeting, and they agreed on. We talked about this last time, I think. They agreed yeah. on this uh, this document that they were going to uh, um, uh, all agree to, and how they're going to run things, and no one's going to run ahead on on marriage without doing it in the proper way and so forth and so the issue was bubbling over and then I got an email uh, from a source who said the new Bishop of Gippsland's just been announced which I'd seen uh, a gentleman called Reverend Dr. Uh, and you should probably see the submission he made to the parliamentary inquiry on uh, on the Marriage Act of course we've just had the Marriage Act change here couples here in Australia and his submission was openly in favor of changing uh, marriage and that the church should change marriage as well and so I posted up the piece and I said look here's his public submission this is a public document here's where he stands on marriage and, and obviously it's in it's in contradiction to to the um, to, to the bishop's position uh, or at least I would have said it's in contradiction to the bishop's position but we hadn't published that document yet anyway so that document then finally came out shortly thereafter this gentleman was from Melbourne, by the way. That's important. Shortly thereafter, the Archdeacon of Melbourne, that is to say the Archdeacon of the central part of the Diocese of Melbourne, around the city centre, um, a, a man who, who openly says, I am a homosexual, and advocates for, um, although he's told the Archbishop that he's chaste, uh, uh, he advocates, obviously, for a changing and liberalising of, of our understanding. He posted a blog post, again, public, he posted it, uh, saying, here's how that bishop's protocol arrangement thing could have been much, much better, uh, essentially it, pulling apart our doctrine of marriage. Um, so I posted up those two items. It caused a bit of a kerfuffle. Uh, as I was doing that, then I got another email from someone who said, uh, I've got videos and photographs from what is a wedding And it's a liturgical celebration of a wedding. And there's clearly a number of Anglican ministers present and officiating. Wow. And so the klaxons went off at davidold.net central. And I went, there's no, no, surely not. This cannot be. No, nobody would surely do this. Um, And so we started investigating. And we spent about two, two and a half weeks just nailing down uh, the story. I tentatively went out to sources uh, all around the country uh, that I knew might be able to help me. Can you identify these people? And so on and so forth. And so we've ended up with this peculiar, uh, a very clever arrangement, uh, uh, Kevin. I'll tell you what it reminds me of. It reminds me of that little Corbin incident uh, that Jesus speaks about, okay. where the Pharisees, the legalists, 
do everything they can not to break the letter of the law, and yet every action that they that they make is contrary to the spirit of the law. Here's what happened: a a gay couple, uh, one of whom is the uh, is a church warden at a, a prominent church in Melbourne, uh, one that's well known for pushing the liberal agenda, uh, uh, got married. Uh, no Anglican minister is allowed to officiate at, at a same-sex wedding, and no Anglican building is allowed to be used for a same-sex wedding. So they went to a Baptist church building nearby. And again, another well, place... Let me ask a quick question. You can't use a building, yeah. you can't use a uh, priest. Yeah. Uh, in, yeah. Anglican, can you use an Anglican liturgy? No, you can't use the rites, wow. uh, because the rites say men and women, and the license under which you're licensed by the government says you can only marry according to the rites of the religious institution that you okay. belong to. Okay, with me so far? I am with it's, you. It's clever. But one part of me is in, is in rap admiration of these guys for how well they've planned this and executed it. So they go to a Baptist church building. The Baptist rules are Baptist ministers can't officiate. No rules about the buildings. Uh, I think them. I think there's a possibility that the building and its history has there's, there's a link to the other partner in the marriage, okay. but we haven't. Him. We deliberately de-identified him. And so I'm going to go there. So anyway, so on the video, which you can see on David uh, net, see uh, this procession going in. A number of ministers. There are three Anglican ministers, all of whom are retired. Uh, the last one to walk in uh, is a man called David John Moore. He walks in wearing a chasuble. And uh, sources from inside the ceremony uh, tell us that he was presiding over the marriage. Wow. He was the one. And afterwards, he celebrated communion. Afterwards, he celebrated communion. Uh, and now, however, he's not allowed officially to do the marriage, right? So they got in another guy. There was another Baptist minister there, a, a female lady uh, by the name of Monroe. She's the first ever woman to be ordained as a Baptist minister in Australia. So, you know, this is a pretty, pretty big thing going on here. And, but they get this other chap who's a former Baptist uh, who then becomes this Wesleyan, Welsh, Calvinist connection, like this tiny little denomination thing that's him and makes us, I can tell. He's the one that actually was the registered celebrant at, really? at, at the wedding. So he's the one that signs the paperwork uh, and does it. But clearly these Anglican ministers are involved in one way or another, even just by liturgically processing in. We've got this liturgical celebration of, of a marriage. Anyway, I posted up. And, of course, there's some interest. There's a lot of interest, and by uh, a unique uh, uh, bit of sympathy that I hadn't planned and hadn't known, it's the clergy conference for Melbourne. Uh, and so they're, they're talking about it a lot, I understand, uh, once again. And there's a bit of pressure now, obviously, on the on the primate, uh, the Archbishop of, of Melbourne, and late in the week he issues an ad clarum. And the ad clarum, again, you can read on David Oldham, and I think uh, you guys have got it on Anglican uh, Inc., uh, the ad clarum sort of, you know, says, oh, we should probably talk a little bit about what changes to the Marriage Act have done uh, and get some clarity. And you may have heard some talk about this ceremony that happened. Well, um, I've had assurances from one of the people that was there. Uh, the Archbishop actually didn't speak to themselves. They got one of the regional bishops to to speak to, to, to one of the people that was present. And they've told him that uh, the Anglican ministers had nothing to do with the marriage ceremony itself. But they did preside at the Eucharist afterwards. Well, you said this is a liturgical wedding. What makes a wedding versus a liturgical wedding? You go to the courthouse, well, so you get married. The the justice of the peace says, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do, I do. Whatever. That's just a wedding." Yeah. What's a well, liturgical I be, wedding? I want to be precise about my language. So here in here in um here in Australia, you either have a civil marriage mm -hmm. or a religious marriage. Okay. So a civil celebrant, we've all seen that, you know, outdoors and it's like you know in the films or whatever. Uh, religious, uh, a minister of religion will do it according to the rights of their religious denomination, uh, and they are the official celebrant. So they're the one that signs the paperwork. They're the one that says to the government they're married. So I've done that many many occasions, obviously, as a minister. This clearly is a religious liturgical celebration of the wedding there's a if you watch the video there's a procession at the start they're all singing a hymn and they all walk in and there's photographs afterwards it's just it's, it's a church service right it's clearly a church service and uh we're not entirely sure what right was used i haven't been able to get my hands on the actual right that was used um well, uh, in there. but i don't think you need to because we can see very clearly what's going on from the photos and the video 
If memory serves, the Baptists in Australia don't allow for same-sex marriage. The Anglican Church yeah. does not allow for it. How does no. this occur? Well, because the other minister, who uh, is from the Welsh Methodist Calvinist Connection or whatever the, the name is, again, it's this tiny little uh, grouping, uh, his denomination, allows her. him and his mates, they agree to same-sex marriage. So they can, according to their rights, they can do the marriage. And he's the official signed celebrant. But let me stress, those we've heard from, sources that, that, that are from inside that, that celebration, have made it quite clear to us that David John Moore was overseeing a large element of the service. He's the last man to walk in. So he takes the position oh, yeah. of precedent in mm -hmm. the procession. There's photographs of him standing in between uh, the groom and groom. So what we all want to say, right? Um, it, the man that walks in before him is is the man um, is is the man Barr, who is the Welsh Methodist connection uh, guy. But David John Moore takes the place of precedence. He's the one overseeing the whole thing. And can I just say, Kevin, even if those three Anglican ministers had just stood silent throughout the whole marriage ceremony, and then only been at the at the what they call the Eucharist um, afterwards, that still in itself is a clear public endorsement of a religious liturgical celebration of, of the wedding. Anyway, the primate makes his ad clarum and he basically says, I've had assurances it didn't happen uh, and they weren't involved in the wedding itself, even though they were standing right there. You, you know, know. It's, less, it's a bit like saying, one commenter said, it's a bit like saying, well, Saul, Saul didn't actually stone Stephen, did he? No, he I just mean, stood there giving, this is, why blame him? Like, yeah, why blame him? You know. he, was, he didn't stone him, he just stood there giving approval. Like, why? Give, why give, give the guy a break? Ignore, he wasn't involved. Ignore the man behind the curtain. I know. Well, the man standing right in front of the curtain. <laughs> I detect a conspiracy. I think this is a GAFCON conspiracy. Every time we go into a GAFCON, GAFCON 1, GAFCON 2, GAFCON 3, there's something horrible <laughs> that happens on the liberal side of the Anglican Communion. Um, well, that just is, they didn't. Yeah, they did. It, can I just say, if it's a conspiracy, then the Archbishop of Canterbury is in on it. Yes, sir. Because I can't beat inviting, and we now know that he was the man that prompted it, I cannot be inviting the chief defender of the main false teaching and, and heteropraxy that's splitting the communion in part. I cannot top oh. inviting that guy to the most prominent Anglican uh, public event of the last five years. Yeah. can't top that. I mean, the guys here in, Mel in Melbourne tried to do that, but really the Archbishop of Canterbury, if anybody has, has shown us the absolute vacuum in leadership, uh, proper leadership in the Anglican Communion, it's actually the Archbishop of Canterbury himself. What's going on in Melbourne? Look, there's a clear challenge here to the Archbishop of Melbourne. They clearly called his bluff, and it does rather look like he blinked. He can't keep everybody happy, but he's trying. And the problem with these things is you can't keep everybody happy, so at some point you have to decide who you are going to keep happy. That's right. That's what Gavin says. Pick your team. You know. Pick your team. Pick your team. Uh, once again, I want to thank you for getting up early, running to the office. Uh, I want to let people know where your office is. Where? What? I'm at, I'm at the Richard Johnson Hall, which is next to the St. John's Cathedral Parramatta, which is in the real heart of Sydney. Wow. Yeah. We have a song called Moving On Up. and yeah, You know, I, I predict um, purple in yeah, your future. I don't know. Bring up the stairs to this office this morning. <laughs> David, I do want to thank you for your time. Have a wonderful weekend. I'm going to see, probably the next time I see you is Gafcon. Next week in Jerusalem. Wow. I can't believe it. It's, it's been such a long I know. All right. We will find a piece of the True Cross for all our <laughs> Action TV viewers and yeah, show it right. to them. Maybe a bit of blood. Amen. Oh, I'm Kevin Carlson. Those are some people that stuff seriously, but but please come on. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to do the, 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 the closing now. We have a like a five second gap thanks to Skype. Okay. Uh, I just have to stop talking. Right? <laughs> Hold on. I'm Kevin Carlson. <laughs> and I'm David Old. And you've been watching episode 402 of Anglican Down Under. <laughs>